Welcome back. We're discussing the future of Cuba. Let's get back to our panel right now. And Luis, as we heard Hugo Cancio tell us a moment ago, just before the break, this will be the first time in almost 60 years that the leader of Cuba will not have the last name Castro. Let's listen to what some Cubans have been saying about this change in leadership. Yes, I am confident that the revolution will continue, that the system will continue as it is and for the better. Everyone in Cuba knows that things are not right. Everyone knows that a large percentage of our society has to change. It is not just a change of mentality. It is a change in a general sense. And we cannot sit and wait for others to do it. We have to push change from everywhere. Just some of the views of the Cuban people there. What do you think are expectations on the part of the Cuban people? I think ex expectations are based mainly in, in the economy. Um, as the guy was saying, um, things are not working well right now uh, in the economic sense. And basically what the Cuban people are, are really worried is uh, what, we'll, what we will have uh, in, in the sense of economic terms. Um, one of the key uh, things is that the Cuban people they want to keep the free and public uh, health care and the free and public uh, education system. Uh, but the government won't, won't be able to, to retain that same rhetoric after 50 years or, of achieving that. So what are the new challenges for the new president? What are the new goals for the new president? And, and a key question is, so everyone is talking about Diaz Canel as the next uh, president, but who will be the second in charge in, in, in in the Council of State, uh, who's going to be the next ver uh, first vice president of what Cuba? What would that tell us, uh, the person who's going to be the next first vice president? Would that give us an idea of which direction Cuba is going to go in? I think it could be. Uh, but also, who, who's going to be the, the, the binomy in the, in, the, in the Cuban economy and the Cuban uh, government? Uh, we'll have Raul Castro uh, uh, allegedly in the, uh, in, as the head of the party. Uh, Diaz Canel, who uh, he will be allegedly again uh, the the head of the government, mm -hmm. but he will be the next um, um, first vice president of the Council of State. Uh, that's a question that, in my opinion, the, the Cuban government uh, they haven't been very clear about this. Uh, could be again we have a, a, for the first time in 60 years someone who will be in, in charge of the government who will not be uh, from the military uh, power. So Fidel Castro as commander-in-chief and Raul Castro as, as general. Uh, but at the same time, we have now Diaz-Canel, who he is a civilian, uh, <laughs> although he, uh, he was involved in, 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 as a soldier in uh, the war in, in Africa. But right. no more than, than that. And his experience as, as, as uh, first secretary of, of the Communist Party in Santa Clara and Holguin, and obviously he had to deal with uh, the militaries in, in those regions. So that's very significant, isn't it? The fact that this is truly a generational change here. Yeah. It is, it yes. is, it okay. is, it is. Let me go back to Ambassador al -Zugaray. Ambassador, uh, let's talk about Cuba's economy. Cuba's economic growth last year was around 2%. Uh, the year before that, in 2016, it shrank by one-tenth of 1%. What do you see as the major challenges for the new leader coming in? Well, I think the problem that we have is that the Economy, well, Diaz Canel today, even today, Diaz Canel said, accepted that the results have not been the ones that were expected. Uh, but the problem here, and I, as I see it, is that the Cuban economy needs to be transformed, needs to be transformed in the way that the three or four documents that have been approved by the most recent party congress, by the National Assembly. Um, need to be transformed. Now, the problem, the problem, as I see it, is not a problem of design. The design is there, but the implementation of the design, the Cuban, the Cuban government has had problems in implementing the expansion of the private sector, in implementing the decentralization of the state sector and making the state sector more efficient. And this, I think, reflects the problem of the struggle between the old mentality and the new mentality. And I think at this moment, the old mentality is still too heavy, is waiting too heavy. For example, the Escarel today, when he was asked about his priorities, he mentioned first the ideological problem. Now, that's not, the, the, that's not how I would put it. I would put it that his main challenge is in the economic sphere. 
The ideological problem, if you are a Marxist, you accept that the ideological problem depends on how the economy would evolve. And the government says it wants to produce a prosperous and sustainable socialism. Well, that implies to do what is in the documents, but the implementation is the one that the, I, I see a lot of, a lot of, a lot of uh, resistance from the old mentality to implement really the new policies. Hugo Cancio, when we look at the Cuban economy and the need to transform it, to change it, uh, Diaz Canel has already talked about that. Uh, let's listen to part of what he had to say. We are defending our process. We are defending the revolution that continues to be threatened, that continues to be attacked in the midst of a complex global situation, in the midst of a complex regional situation, and in the midst of updating our economic and social model. So we hear there, Hugo, uh, that Diaz Canel recognizes that there is a need for change, talks about changing the economic and social model. There are something like 600,000 self-employed workers in Cuba right now running things like restaurants, hotels, other businesses. Could we see more of that? Well, I, I agree with, uh, with Ambassador, um, uh, the Ambassador's comments. Uh, 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 and I also agree with, uh, with Diaz Canel when he said, you know, we need to defend. But defend needs to be uh, succeeded by implement. You need to succeed and implement. You cannot continue with the internal discussion forever. At one point or another, decisions have to be made. So, um, you know, everyone, everyone seems to recognize that things are not going well. Uh, uh, my question is, what are you going to do to better those things that are not going well? What is your economic agenda? What is your, what is your agenda to transform and push forward the, you know, the e economic reforms and take it into the next level? Uh, and I think that's key. So, so my concern has always been that in my conversations with my fellow Cubans when I'm in Havana, it's everybody seems to recognize that there's an issue. Uh, but you know, what are we going to do about it? You know, what's the next step? So uh, defend uh, uh, the, the current system of government is fine. Uh, defend their, their plan, their operational plan is fine. But they need to implement, to start implementing some of those reforms that, that, that in my opinion, are, are way overdue. Luis, Hugo raises an important point there. On the one hand, uh, Diaz Canel recognizes the need for social change, for economic change. On the other hand, he did talk about defending the revolution. Are those mutually compatible? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, again, we have to see the revolution as a continuity of, 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 of new policies um, since 1959. And with this generational uh, transition, so obviously, again, they will have new uh, goals and new challenges. Uh, and it's totally uh, compatible, uh, both of them. So if we remember in 2010, 2011, uh, they were approved the guidelines, the, uh, the new guidelines for the economic and the socialism. In five years later, they were only, um, they were, they said that they, uh, in, in the National Assembly, that they, they only had been able to achieve the 11% of, um, to, to, uh, to those uh, guidelines, to, uh, basically get do, do some some goals so that's a, a slow pace absolutely and and people were joking but not so joking that the hundred percent of those guidelines they will be achieved in 60 years uh, from 20, 2010 so what are the new uh, um, challenges for the new president and what are the, the new goals obviously they will be uh, in in the line of what people uh, expect the average Cuban Ambassador Alzura, given the fact that uh, relations with the United States have deteriorated since President Trump came to office, will Cuba then be looking more to its neighborhood, to the Latin American allies uh, to improve its, its relationship uh, and to countries further afield, countries like China, for instance? Well, I think that uh, Raul Castro has carried out a long-term strategy of expanding Cuba's external relations not only with China, with Russia, with the European Union. Remember, 2008, Cuba and the European Union started negotiating a deal that was finally uh, signed last year. And uh, it, I mean, all these things seem to be working very well. The problem with Latin America is that Latin America right now, although the left has not disappeared, but obviously the left has lost its, uh, its positions in 
is ruling positions in uh, Brazil, in Argentina, uh, Venezuela has problems. So it's, it's difficult at this point in time to find the same situation that Cuba enjoyed with many of these countries I mentioned, let's say, five years ago. Five years ago, you had, uh, you had uh, Dilma Rousseff in power in Brazil, supporting better relations with Cuba. You had Cristina Kirchner in Argentina supporting that. And, and of course, the situation in Venezuela was much better than it is today. Now, it's quite, it's, the situation has changed, but I think Cuba maintains its positions. Its positions are not completely reversed, but the support and the relationship must come from some other sources. And I would bet uh, the trio of China, Russia, and the European Union will play a very significant role in, in, in the future external economic relations with Cuba. Don't forget about Canada. Canada is probably one of Cuba's most important partners is the number one tourist partner, the number two investment partner, the number four trading partner. So I think Cuba's diversified uh, economic external directions are a plus with which Diaz-Canel can work. And it, they were inherited from Raul Castro. Okay, and that's where we have to leave it. Thanks to all of you for being with us. That's it for this edition of The Heat, but the conversation continues online. Join us on CGTN America's Facebook page to comment on this or any other show. Or chat with us on Twitter at CGTN America. I'm Arnold Naidu in Washington, D.C. Thanks for being with us.